You are listening to No, You're Crazy. My name is Susan Denae. We all have crazy. What separates us is how we choose to deal with it. I'm going to be delivering engaging and actionable tools to own your crazy, treat your crazy, and turn it into your own superpower. I hope that you walk away from this show feeling the power and strength within you. And never forget to enjoy your journey because you are worth it. Hey everyone, good afternoon, maybe early evening for some of you. My name is Susan Denae and you are listening to the Know You're Crazy talk show where I am talking about emotional recovery in the raw. And I like to do this in four key areas, our professional or our career, uh, our relationships, our finances and our health. And I have been on a relationship kick for the last month or so Uh, I've got a few clients that I'm coaching right now, and it just really leads me uh, to be inspired. Uh, Lots of fresh new ideas or thoughts and teachings I've had in my past that are being relearned, retaught recently. So I'm inspired. I think it was Carl Jung who said, you know, to to be an inspiring individual, you must have people that inspire you to keep going forward. And yes, that is paraphrased. But ultimately, if you're a coach out there or you're a teacher or you're somebody who sponsors somebody in recovery and mentor, uh, I'm sure you know that when they inspire you, you in turn are inspired. And so today's show is all about learning how to be authentically yourself in relationships. The title of the show was, I think something like, don't be a secret, a bit at the at the root of that is about being completely authentic in your relationships. And so what do I mean by that? Uh, Well, do you ever wonder why your friends and intimate partners never seem to measure up to your needs? Or maybe you've got one or two who doesn't. Uh, What about your desires? Uh, Do those closest to you truly understand what your desires are? Are they current with where you're at? I often share that, you know, who you were 10 years ago may not be who you are today. And if you've been in an intimate relationship with somebody for a significant amount of time, do they know where you're at today on your hopes, on your vision? Uh, what are, what would you like to see come true for you moving forward? Uh, do you ever find yourself holding back, holding back, uh, listening longer than you want to listen? not knowing how to say what you wanna say, uh, feeling as if their feelings are more important than your own feelings, your own input. Uh, You know, for a partner to be authentic in a relationship, I mean, what it really comes down to is if if you're gonna, if I'm gonna engage in a relationship, let's just say I'm gonna hammer in on intimate relationships today and use your own filter. If this applies more to you because it's a professional relationship you're struggling with, or it's a relationship with your child, you know, let's leave the child out because this may be different for children. So let's just hone in on quality relationships. I'm going to talk about intimate ones when I'm uh, sharing today. But let's say you've got a partner in your life, somebody that you're sharing a significant amount of time with, and you're not being authentically yourself. they, They really don't know what's going on with you. Perhaps you've been making the excuse, I'm too busy to sit down with that. Uh, You know, I've had these thoughts. I don't even know how I feel about my thoughts. And so therefore you're not truly sharing. How fair do you think that is to your partner? How fair do you think that is? Are you giving them an opportunity to show up like they could for you? Or are you shorting them out of opportunity? they're not able to show up for you the best way that they know how if you're a secret. They don't know how to communicate with you or how to meet your needs, just if you're not telling them. You know, I've, uh, there are such things as emotional boundaries, intellectual boundaries, uh, and often what I think we do is, is we hold back and we assume, like we, we take this uh, overly critical boundary with ourselves and we don't honestly and openly share with someone else. And then we're wondering why they're not meeting our needs. We're wondering why we're frustrated. 
And so that's what I'm talking about today on the show is how do you get past those barriers with yourself, the barriers with your communication, and become authentically you in a relationship and do it so that you feel good about the choice you've made in your communication and your partner is able to receive you with what you're authentically giving them. All right, so let's start out. So I did a video not too long ago on, it's called Relationship Rescue. And I'm gonna refer to this video a couple times today. And in that video, uh, what I talk about is doing a complete inventory of your past relationships, uh, taking a look at especially intimate relationships. So if you're trying to figure out you know, what makes me happy today? Because my, my, my question for you right now is, do you know what you desire in a relationship? Do you truly know? And even if you've been in a relationship for a while, have you taken the time to ask yourself that? So the exercise in that video goes through writing down your prior relationships and making a list of your likes and making your list of your dislikes in each relationship. Because as you all know, a relationship starts out, uh, we, we are fully engaged, we're interested in what the other person has to say. We're like on the pink cloud of the relationship. Uh, each other's character defects haven't quite, you know, infiltrated everything yet. You know, we haven't quite noticed if they chew with their mouth open or, or they, you know, they don't have great hygiene. We, we haven't got that point. But in the beginning, there's like this romantic phase. And in that romantic phase of the relationship, we start to understand what we really like. And often we're all on the same page. I mean, think about it. Uh, we, we like great conversation. Uh, what do you do in the beginning of a relationship? You, you date, you go out, you, you find fun things to do. You know, we, we do what we, the choices that we make, the choices that we choose to, uh, you know, engage in the people, the places, the things, we're always doing it because we're looking to find enjoyment in the next decision that we make. And so now you've got this wonderful brand new relationship. You're having fun. It's your new playmate. You know, it's your buddy. You're, you're playful. And those are all the things that we desire in a relationship. And there's going to be more added on to that, right? But as you reflect back on these relationships, you start to get to the core of what are my desires within a relationship? And then what happens? We have this beautiful experience with somebody. It's like, you know, pink cloud moments. And then we're afraid it's going to go away. So what do we do? Oh, we start withholding a little bit. Or maybe we didn't withhold and our partner uh, shows some disappointment. Maybe we have a, a hurt feeling or uh, something happens and we start pulling in. And we start putting up those walls. And we start questioning who we are in the relationship because if we truly show who we are and those things in the past, those, those character flaws that can tend to pop up on us when we're least expecting it, those we're aware of, we're afraid they're going to come out and they're going to ruin this great moment that we're having with somebody. So we pull in. We pull in and we become vulnerable to our own self and we start to withhold in the relationships that are in front of us. You know, it's no surprise to me when couples come to me to talk or to be coached or whatever it is, that they're at a dilemma where they, they feel like they're hitting a wall, but what's happening is both people have uh, pulled back and, and put up walls. They're, they're afraid to be authentically themselves for fear of what the other person's going to think. And so the one thing that you're wanting to protect or the one thing they're wanting to protect is, is the one thing they're not being themselves around. So how true do you, or how do you think your needs will be met by having that occur in your relationships? Likely, they're probably not going to be met. And so my question, another question for you today is, how often are you negotiating your authenticity for a relationship? You know, sometimes you might hear people say, I don't want to settle again. I, I have said that in my past. I don't want to settle again. And settling is subtle. Uh, we don't realize it's happening. I believe we, we settle for things that don't necessarily align with our best self when we're fearful of something leaving us. Uh, we begin to negotiate who we truly are. Uh, and, and that's how the settling happens. And so then the person that we're with 
recognize, I don't even know if they recognize it, but they're not really being with the person in the beginning of the relationship. And so people start wondering, well, what happened? What happened to that? And slowly but surely, communication starts to break down. The openness that we feel no longer, ex you know, it's, it's kind of if or, you know, it's here or there. Uh, although we're having great times together, there's, there's other things that seem to be underlying. And once again, both parties are starting to hold back. Uh, so when you think about the relationship that you're in today, does your partner or does the person you're dating, and I don't care how new it's dating, and, I, and there may be a little bit of controversy with how I'm going to go with this today, but do they know all about you? Is there a secret you're keeping from them? And if there is, what is your justification for that? Just think about it. And I understand there's appropriate and there's inappropriate. This isn't about digging up your past and telling them every single horrible thing about you. But usually there's important things to, to I don't know, to be open about. Are you open about your emotions? Are you open about things you've struggled with in your past and relationships? Um, are you open about your intimacy? What type of intimacy you prefer to have? What type of intimate contact you prefer to have? Um, are you open about struggles you've had behind, you know, in the bedroom? Are you open about those things? Um, are you open about, I mean, are you you? Are you you? Are you being fair to the person that you're bringing into your life? Are they, be give, are they given the choice to decide for themselves whether or not they want to be with you? And so all of this can feel really scary. It can feel overwhelming. It can be like, you got to be kidding me right now. I don't want to do this. But I, I will tell you, when you show up in a relationship and you are you, and there's no secrets, and there's no hidden agenda, and the other person respects you for it and understands it, and you in turn honor them for being exactly who they are. What happens is we stop expecting people to change to our will. Uh, we don't put demands on ourselves that aren't authentic anymore. And we start to understand that this is a wonderful, beautiful relationship that we can have with somebody. And really being ourselves isn't really that hard. Sometimes it's just a matter of how do we say it? How do we communicate that? Uh, so we're going to go to a quick break. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking about all kinds of things. Uh, but how do we get there? How do we become authentic? How do we take a look at those desires? And if, if we are withholding some things, how do we become comfortable with sharing that with somebody? Uh, and, and when's the appropriate time timing for that? You know, I, and, and so I'm going to jump into all that when we return. So uh, if you can contact me at susandanae.com, if any of this has sounded like something you'd like some personal coaching on or some couple coaching on, I'm available. Uh, but other than that, we will be back here shortly and I will be diving into the next part of the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Know Your Crazy Talk Show. My name is Susan Danae and we are talking about emotional recovery in the raw Today, I'm honing in on relationships, uh, specifically, how do we learn how to not be a secret in our relationship, but to walk authentically within our own being? How do we build the confidence to be who we are and not worry so much about what the other person thinks of us? That may sound like a big order, uh, but, uh, but if you're not being yourself in a relationship, who you date? <laughs> I mean, really, <laughs> right? I mean, think about it. If you're in a relationship with somebody and, and you're really putting up a front constantly because you're trying to please them for some, un, you know, some reason, uh, why don't you trust them with you? You know, why don't you trust them with you? And and I know there, there's all these, you know, there's these things we could talk about fear. They're going to go away. Uh, you know, if they knew that, what would they think? And so, you know, I, you know, there's accountability in relationships, right? Like I have a responsibility to show up for my partner authentically. And it's not always pretty, trust me. There, there's some crazy, I could get him in here right now and he would share with you openly. But what I'm not with my partner is I'm not a secret, all right? I live with an integrity within my relationship. 
And that's what I'm pushing on today is how do you live within yourself and with integrity within your relationship so that you're bringing to the party who you are. So, and here's, here's why, here's the most important thing. So your needs get met. So your needs get met in a relationship. So how do you communicate your needs? Okay, one, I referred to that exercise I did a couple of weeks ago, or no, it was back in March, I think, actually, Relationship Rescue, where we're getting into the likes and dislikes. Well, there's another exercise, and I don't know if I've done a video on this one yet, but it's how we discover what our needs are in a relationship. Okay, once you discover what your needs are, and, and, and there's, there's lots of ways to do this. Um, I hit on desires in the first part of the show. What are your desires in a relationship? And I said, you know, when you look back at past relationships and you really look at what you liked about those relationships, you will usually find things that show up with every single person you've had in your past. Uh, you know, usually there's laughter involved. There's um, uh, fun. Uh, there might be uh, you like, you know, financial security with somebody. Maybe they, you know, they didn't have a lot of financial stress and you enjoyed that about the relationship. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe they were super playful. Uh, you liked the same thing. So there's things that you had in desires. And as you look back that you're going to understand, this is what I really liked about them. And then there's going to be a not like list, right? Maybe they were, you know, maybe they weren't trustworthy. Maybe they cheated in the relationship and you didn't like that. Uh, maybe they, you know, they had a lot of road rage in the car and you didn't like that and it scared you. Um, or maybe she nagged a lot. And you were just like, oh my God, I, I just can't do this. You know, there's all kinds of things that we learn by looking at the past at what worked. But often, you know, we will look back at the past to complain about the past, but have we looked at the past to learn from the past? And have you done that in regards to your relationship? Even if you've been with somebody for a while right now, and, and maybe you're looking, you might be in a blissful stage, right? Like I know a couple of people around there, they're just like, they're in a blissful stage of the relationship. Um, and then there are stages of relationships where it's going to take some work. I mean, when you commit to a relationship, there's a roller coaster ride involved. And sometimes you're like, you're going up for a long time. It's all good. And then you're going down and you're wondering, oh my God, am I going to die? Was this the right decision? Should I have gotten on this ride? And that's going to happen because we're human. And as we join together in a relationship, we start to learn a lot about one another and those quirks and those sometimes those character flaws, things like that come to the surface. So when that happens, how do you become comfortable with communicating your needs and staying true to yourself? Often we're, we're figuring that out along the way sometimes. And so here's a couple questions for you. Um, do you feel unheard. I think unheard's a word, isn't it? Do you feel unheard in your relationships? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of honing in on intimate relationships, but this can even be professional. Uh, it can be with your friends. Do you feel unheard? Because if you're feeling unheard, here's going to be a little bit of work for you. Often, this is a sign of poor expression in your relationships. Um, you're not expressing to them what they need to know to help give you what you need. Uh, how would we, how would you find out if this is what's going on? Uh, do you find yourself rolling your eyes? Do you find yourself judging them when they're not in the room? Uh, do you feel frustrated? Do you have bursts of temper? Do you become short, sarcastic? Uh, maybe you are a direct person. Or maybe somebody's communicating with you and you pull inward and you really don't even know what to say. You become frustrated. You become sad. It, 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 you wish you had a vocabulary to express the emotion, but you don't and you're caught off guard by the heat of the moment. Uh, these are a couple, uh, well, several actually, ways in which we have uh, what I would like to say, false expression. Uh, we, we just, we don't know how to effectively express ourselves. Uh, and so often when that happens, we don't feel heard because see, when we're demanding or we're um, short with our comments, uh, 
sarcastic. Uh, we, we might dismiss somebody's emotions. We, we don't hear it because we're so caught up in our own emotion, right? We're so caught up in the moment. Well, we're not appropriately expressing how we feel of what's going on underneath all that. And vice versa, if you're somebody who's pulling in and you're caught off guard by the heat of the moment, uh, and you know maybe you've heard yourself saying the words, I just shut down. Or, you know, ultimately, they can't really meet your needs either because you're not feeling heard because you're not speaking up. And it's okay if you don't know how to speak up. You know, in the first segment, I was talking about, this is about accountability in our relationships. And so if you're struggling in a relationship or if you're looking for more satisfaction in your relationship, you want more joy, you want more intimacy, any category that you're looking for more of in your relationships, something's going on with the expression in which you're showing up. And I will, little hint, there's not enough expression and you're usually either burying the feeling with frustration. You don't know, how, either way, you don't know how to get it out. I mean, communication and learning how to communicate in a relationship, it's an ongoing process and it takes a dedicated effort. And so one of the things that I'm going to do today with you is I'm going to give some brief relationship, what I like to call relationship scripting, uh, some example phrases. You'll get to see, is that something that fits me? Is that something that, um, you know, would help me? That type of thing. We're going to go through some of that. Uh, and then I'm also going to go through some examples of when that may come up. All right. So, but before I go off on a tangent, because I'm about to, uh, if you feel that it's too serious to bring up, say, say you have something that you want someone to know but you've done talked yourself out of it because you said it's just, it's just too serious. It's just too serious. Well, once again, you just don't know how to say it. Just saying, you don't know how to say it. And so it'll feel too overwhelming. It'll feel too big. Um, and once again, coming back to the relationship piece of it uh, as a partnership, you know, as a partnership, you know, does your partner truly know what your thoughts and ideas and feelings are about the relationship, the marriage at this point? Do they know what's going on with you and your thoughts? And this isn't about emotionally uh, being a tyrant. This isn't about being selfish. This is simply just saying, am I being a secret in my relationship? Am I being a secret? I do I have thoughts and judgments against my partner that they don't know about? And why is that? And, and wh where's the communication breaking down at? Okay. All right. So it might be in a secret. All right. Let's talk about one more thing before we go to break. So I'm going to take another short break here. There are things in relationships, and I'm going to give you very general here, uh, called boundary violations. Boundary violations. And these are going to usually be intellectual boundary violations, um, emotional boundary violations. We'll just leave it there. Now, if you ask my husband, our kids have materialistic violations. They, they borrow stuff and they don't put it back. <laughs> or they put it back and it's, it's not in the same condition as when they took it. That's a material violation. But for the relationship piece of it, um, you know, unless you got that going on, but let's stick to the adults. Um, emotional violations, boundary violations, and intellectual boundary violations. And so to give an example, th this will sound familiar because this is kind of trendy right now. Uh, if somebody gaslights your emotions, right? And so I went ahead and I, I Googled the definition of gaslighting because I don't know what everybody thinks gaslighting is. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's assumed we know, but here's what Google had to say to manipulate someone by psychological means into questioning their own sanity. Um, a gaslighter may can also convince their, they call them victims, that they're mentally unfit or they are too sensitive. So do you have anybody in your life saying that you're too sensitive? Uh, you know, Do you have anybody who's dismissive with your ideas? Uh, why are we talking about this? Because sometimes, and when we come back from break, I'm going to go more into this, because sometimes the buried feelings that we've got is there's boundary violations going on everywhere, and we know what we feel, but we don't know what to say. So when we come back from break, we're going to start talking about some relationship scripting, 
how to get down to what I feel, how do I say it, how do I put words to it, um, and all of this leads to being authentic in your relationship. So be back uh, here shortly and more on relationship authenticity with your partner. Hey everyone, this is Susan Denae and you're watching and listening to the Know Your Crazy Talk Show where today I am talking about emotional recovery in the raw, specifically with relationships and learning how to authentically show up in our relationships. How do we not be a secret with our feelings and our emotions? How do we also not make it a big drama fest, right? Like overly talk about everything. Uh, usually if somebody's over talking to everything in a relationship, uh, there, there's a disconnect between uh, partners and, and one's feeling uh, like they're doing all the observing and, and the other person's not doing any work on it. And so today what I'm talking about is how do we authentically show up in our relationships? Um, and most importantly, what's at the root of that is making sure that everybody has a voice and that both people or parties involved, whether, you know, wherever this is showing up for you at, um, have an opportunity to express what they feel but also have um, a, a desire to understand what their needs are in the relationship. Um, I think the fear crops up in relationships when, uh, whether we uh, consciously are aware of it or it's um, just coming up as a habit, a way of being in relationships where we think that we're not, it's like fear, you know, I'm scared I'm gonna lose something I don't have or I'm, I'm not gonna get something that I want. Um, however, in relationships, sometimes we don't understand how to articulate that. We don't understand how to articulate that. Uh, some of the best work that I do with folks is just giving them an example sentence of something they can say in a tough, in what they're perceiving to be a tough situation. It's not that they, uh, that the situation per se is, is really impossible to handle. It's a matter of, I don't know the words in which to say in order to express that. You know, prior, uh, before break, I was talking about you know, if you're feeling unheard in a relationship, often it's a result of not having um, enough uh, accurate expression on your part in communication. Um, if, if you're an outward person, you know, and what, what I mean by that is when you become overwhelmed or frustrated or disappointed in something or some situation, your your expression comes outward. So so you're you might be demanding. Uh, you might come across as intimidating. Uh, that that's one personality type. Uh, and so therefore, when that's happening, your needs can't be met because it's really all about, uh, sh you know, I want to say shouting, but sometimes it can be. It's very assertive to the point where, you know, the anger and the points being made, but the feelings getting buried. And so you're never expressing what's underneath all of that. Um, and then on the opposite side of that, which would be, you know, the other personality type where they're going to pull in when things get you know, tense. Uh, they, they, you know, another way to, uh, they shut down, their expression isn't coming across authentically either because they're not, you know, as we would tell a little, a kid who's learning how to talk, they're not using their words either. And so both parties end up having a lot of confusion, uh, but really it's, it's, it's not about that two people can't come to a solution or be a team again. It's just, we, we got off, we got off, you know, we, we got off our um, path, you know, we, we got, we misled and, and all these, you know, this fear of, of something not being met or this fear of something not going the way that we want it go, want it to go. We end up taking it out on the relationship or taking it out on each other. So I said, when we come back to this session or this segment, I'm going to be talking about some relationship scripting, which um, is on the board. Uh, one of the best things that I think anyone can do for their communication or to get down to, you know, how can I authentically be myself, learn some new words. Uh, when, you know, emotions and expression, you know, we get caught up in our work days, we get caught up in the to-do tasks, you know, running errands, cooking dinner, you know, playtime, you know, we feel like we're busy, 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 busy. Um, and, and we're going, 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 and yet we're not pausing often enough to say, what are some new words I can use? What is a way that I could express myself? Um, I personally like doing this because I like to write. I like to write. And so when you're a writer 
uh, you're, you're creative with words, you want to be. And so you're constantly looking for new words to express, to express the emotions, to ex express the moment. Um, and so relationship scripting, to give an example, uh, let's say I have, I have a, an actual, in one of my coaching sessions, I have a worksheet on this. Uh, but so I'm just going to take one of these um, down. So here we go. Remember I talked about intellectual boundaries. Uh, I talked about uh, you've got different emotional boundaries. So this is kind of hitting on the um, a little bit of, of both of those. So here's here's the thing. Although intellectually I respect your schedule, I feel blank when something in your schedule comes before me. All right. So I blank when something comes before me. All right. Is somebody in the relationship a busybody? <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> Somebody's probably got the full schedule. You know, they, they got the, they, they got the, uh, they got the Zoom meeting, they've got, you know, dates with friends, they've got the get to the gym, uh, you know, maybe they do some volunteer work, somebody's busy. Uh, and the other person, as much as they love that about their partner, probably or maybe might come into this. Okay, so imagine if you got a busy bee in the relationship. And I, and I kind of laugh because, um. I've been the busy bee, right? And so some of this stuff actually just comes right from my husband and I. Uh, I've been the busy bee. And so as the busy bee, I'm off doing my thing and, you know, and, and kind of penciling everybody in on the calendar. And if I'm not careful, right, you know, I have accountability to come back and check in and say, you know, and, and pay attention. You know, sometimes it's not a verbal sit down with them and sit down, and, you know, and check in, which, which is nice to do. Sometimes it's just me re-looking at my relationships and saying, how much time am I spending with each of these? Because trust me, if, if you're not spending enough time with something or some area of your life, you're going to know it because that area is going to get cranky, right? Something's going to start talking to you. You don't pay enough attention to your taxes, tax man's going to talk to you. You don't pay enough attention to your health, health's going to talk to you. In relationships, whoever needs your attention, if you, if you, um, don't have enough quality time there, they're going to start express something's going to happen in the relationship. So here's some new words. I feel uncertain. I feel uncertain when other things in your schedule come before me. Why would somebody have uncertainty in a relationship if the other partner's constantly busy? Because you're, it's the message is something is more important than me and it's continuing to happen weeks on end. Okay. So the goal for one person is to know that I feel this way. So let's say somebody doesn't have this vocabulary and they're never saying that, but they are an outwardly expressive person. That may come out as, you know, oh, or passive aggressive. There's one. Oh, so we're just not gonna do dinner tonight? All right. You know, click, hang up the phone. Uh, you know, oh, so you're busy again? Okay. Insinuating with a special tone, the disappointment. What, what's going on underneath that is there's stuff being felt by the person who's not, who's feeling uncertain about how um, they're being perceived in the relationship. And so they're coming out with outward um, aggression or passive aggressiveness. And so let's say you've got the other person who holds everything in and they're dealing with a busy body. So there, there might just be, they just might hold everything in for so long um, that they'll just uh, never get their needs met. Or if that goes on endlessly with no expression to the other person, that person might be prone to breaking up the relationship. That person might be prone to finding somebody else who will think their time's important with them. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, worst case scenarios for somebody uh, who, who would hold within also. Either way, the expression is, I feel this. And so what does this have to do with authentically being yourself in a relationship? 
because when we're covering up this and we're not going back to the root of what's really going on in the emotions or the feelings of, of, of the underneath the frustration, underneath the outward, um, outward frustration, inward frustration, whatever it is, we're not being ourselves. We're not getting our needs met. You know, we're, we're not using, um, we're not using our words, right? And so these are some other words we can use. I feel scared. Um, I feel impatient. Um, I feel isolated when you're doing these things. Let's say you've got somebody who um, doesn't know any better because you haven't told them any better. Uh, maybe they do some emotional boundary violation with you. Maybe when you are thinking you're being authentic or you're talking about your day and how things went, uh, they, you know, turn on the TV or the internet and, and just kind of shut you down and, and you feel like I'm not being heard. Well, there's an emotional boundary. You're being dismissed. And sometimes we don't understand that that's what's going on. And the person who's maybe doing the dismissing doesn't realize the damage that's being done because nobody's talking about how it makes them feel. Might make them feel real isolated, right? Uh, might make them feel separate. You know, I'm not in a relationship because I wanna be by myself. I'm not in a relationship because I wanna be by myself. I'm in a relationship, and this goes back to those desires. I'm in a relationship because I want to engage with somebody. I wanna play with somebody. You know, I, I want to, um, Okay, for me personally, I mean, think about your desires in a relationship. I want to go on long walks with somebody, you know, and, and I do with my husband. And I want to go on motorcycle rides and I want to travel. And, uh, you know, there's all these beautiful things that we get to do in a relationship. Um, but if we're feeling separate because somebody's schedule can't pencil us in, we will start to shut down and not authentically be ourselves. And then what will happen is we start to feel that, you know, we're just not worth speaking up. And it's never about that. It's about the fact that our partner doesn't know what the hell is going on with us because we're not expressing it. We're not expressing it. All right. So when we come back from break, our final break, when we come back, I'm just going to give a few more uh, relationship scripting techniques. I'll probably try to scribble some down while we're on break. And then I'm going to talk about well, what happens after you start to authentically show up, you start to authentically express yourself. And then there's this aftermath, you know, there's this adjustment period where we have to get into like this comfortable phase with being ourselves because, you know, we've trained people a certain way. And so when we start showing up differently, they're going to respond differently. And there's a, there's an adjustment period. So we will be back here shortly. If you're wanting to reach out to me, you can do that at susandanae.com. You can click on the email. I'll be more than happy to talk to you in detail like this. Um, or if you're a relationship out there that's looking for some coaching, uh, not only in this area, but you're wanting to talk about vision and goals for your future together, uh, really excited to work with folks on that also. So be back shortly. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Know Your Crazy Talk Show. My name is Susan Denae, and we are talking about emotional recovery in the raw today. Um, I'm specifically honing in on relationships and how to authentically show up and be ourselves. And I am, you know, I'm giving you kind of like the crash course. I, I'm giving you the overall. Uh, and if if you're someone who's eager to look to improve your relationships, you will take what I'm giving you today and you will dissect the heck out of it. Uh, because I, I'm, I'm kind of given like the big chunks that it's like, this is kind of, this is not even kind of, this is what you're wanting to hone in on. And these are a couple ways to do it. And then you got to take the ball and run with it um, or hire a coach to help you get there or a therapist or somebody. All right. So I left off last segment talking about, you know, when we're authentically ourselves and how we, we want relationships where we can just be us, you know, so when we walk in the door, if we're living with somebody and we walk in the door, we're just us. We're not feeling like we have to worry about the other person excessively. We have to, uh, you know, put on a, a, a armor because they're going to be emotional today. Uh, you know, I, I posted a video uh, today on my Facebook, and I was talking about it was one of the one it was a it was a clip from one of these shows where I was saying, you know, what is the mood that you're bringing into the relationship? You know, and being accountable to our mood swings, to our behaviors, you know, if we're prone to depression or whatever it is, 
but having an honest uh, take on how that impacts our family. The opposite side of that is, how are you at not putting on other people's emotional jackets? Uh, and I, I'm going to not go into a ton of detail about that, but you know, the responsibility for you to just own your own stuff and stay out of other people's bad days. Right. But ultimately when you walk in a home or when you walk into your relationship or you're connecting with somebody, if you're overly focused on how they're going to be all the time, um, then you're not authentically showing up with yourself uh, as yourself. And you're also not relaxed, which means that you're not fun. You're not fun. Probably it's not free will. Uh, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're not expressive, you're not expressive. Uh, so relationship scripting. Okay. That's kind of, that's kind of where this was all going. So we're into relationship scripting and how do we effectively communicate things? And this is why I said, I'm kind of giving you the big chunks today. Uh, and I'll, I'll have to do more shows on this. But for relationship scripting, it's really about getting to the bottom of how we feel about certain things in the relationship, expressing how we feel about those things in the relationship, and then ultimately being able to express what our needs are in the relationship. Uh, the example, so here's another example. So I feel blank when we argue. Uh, this might be, uh, I feel intimidated when we argue. Um, I feel hopeless when we argue. Um, I feel sad when we argue. Um, I feel intimidated when we argue. Like whatever it is, um, that's just one example. But the bottom line is really understanding what are different words you can use to start to describe what's going on. Because if you're outwardly expressing too much, you're covering up something underneath. And if you're withholding everything, you're covering up stuff that's going on inside. And what's happening is you're not authentically expressing your true self. And so therefore your partner's not able to show up for you in the best of their ability to help meet your needs. And so ultimately, so that you can come together as a team and honor that the whole reason you came together, which was simply to have joy, to have fun. You know, nobody wants a stressful relationship, but if we go too long with not being ourselves and we feel shut down, that relationship's going to burn. I'm just telling you, that relationship's going to burn. And it's either going to burn or it's going to have a slow death. That means every time you walk in that door, you're going to dread it. Or you're going to walk into that relationship or you're going to show up for that relationship and you're going to feel overused and underappreciated. That's exactly what's going to happen. And it's all because I didn't know, you didn't know, or I didn't know that I've had this in my life. I didn't know how to express myself authentically. And I definitely didn't know how to express my needs, uh, which we're going to get to. So what are needs in a relationship? So here's a couple. Um, I need your full attention uh, when I'm talking about this situation. Or it would be helpful for me if when we're talking about this or when we're doing something that uh, that you nod your head and you know that you're listening to me. These are different types of needs. Um, I need to talk a little bit more about this thing or I need you to help me handle the finances. But really getting honest with how we need things, being able to communicate with our partner what our needs are. Um, I need to play more, dude. I need to go out and hop on the motorcycle more, or I need to travel more. I need to have more fun in this relationship. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I, I gave some feedback one time to a client. I said, you know, have you gotten used to asking them for their professional feedback or, or just their, their adult feedback? You know, what do they think about a certain situation? Or are you constantly in your relationship trying to figure everything out on your own? Uh, often we forget, you know, we're in a relationship with somebody because we, uh, appreciated who they were. Uh, we liked their uh, intellect. There was all these beautiful things about them. And then we get into the relationship and we forget to honor that about them. We forget to honor that about them. So what's the flip side? Because we're getting close to wrap. I'm getting close to wrapping up. So what's the flip side of saying how you feel? The flip side of that is expressing um, the good stuff. Uh, you make me feel wonderful when you do this. Uh, you make me feel treasured when you give me your one-on-one -on -one attention, or you make me feel special when you give me back rubs on Tuesday nights or something. I mean, I don't know, but whatever it is, are you also expressing the good in the relationship for your partner? Are you expressing those? Um, 
And just so I stay consistent, because I'm about to three minutes before we wrap up this show, I'm going to touch just real quick on aftermath. So let's say you're taking in this show and, and you're writing some stuff down and you're, you know, wow, I got a lot to express. I need to look up some words. And then you go and you, and you go for it. You're going to talk to your partner. Here's first tip. First tip, talk at a good time. Talk when you're both in an elevated state of joy. If, if you have a date night and everything's going real smooth, ask and say, you know what, do you mind if we talk about this? Talk about things when it's, you know, bring up something when it's positive for both of you. Um, tip number two, don't be surprised if your partner doesn't handle your communication the way you want them to in the beginning. If you're changing something up in your relationship, give your partner the grace to change also. Just because you made the decision to change it up and to communicate doesn't mean they were necessarily ready to receive it. So honor that. It's about not totally placing a harsh expectation on what they're going to do with your communication. Give it time to breathe. Give it space. Uh, and then what, there was one more. I don't know what it was. I lost it, but I'll, I'll throw another one that just popped in. Thank them for their time and, and being able to listen to you. And, and remember to say an appreciation of all your relationships. The more authentic you are with you and the more you are honest with yourself, whether those are things your partner needs to know about you because you have held back, you've refused to admit them because you're scared of them leaving, honor that about yourself and give yourself the permission to be who you're going to be in your relationship. You know where you're holding back. You know. You know where you're holding back. And you are worth expressing yourself authentically. Remember how you feel. Remember what you need and go from there. All right, so we are, that is a wrap. This thing flew by. Uh, if you're wanting to reach out to me for any questions on the show, comments on the show, or you're just simply looking for a coach, I would be, I would love to help you. Uh, SusanDenae.com. You can also check out my social media or repeats of this podcast, uh, you know, at Susan Denae somewhere, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, whatever. Uh, you can get more of this. Uh, but having said that, have a fantastic evening. It was super great to be with you guys this week. Um, and you are worth it. Enjoy the journey. That's a wrap. You have been listening to Know You're Crazy. 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 And my name is Susan Denae. We are identifying, understanding, and treating your crazy one episode at a time. Tune in to TransformationTalkRadio.com. To connect with me or Growth Spurt Your Life, please visit SusanDenae.com. That's Susan Denae, D-E-N-E-E.com. -E -E